Uh, we're joined now by Louise Brooks, whose uh, brother Andrew Mark Brooks uh, died in the Hillsborough disaster. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Louise. Um, uh, we'll perhaps come to the government and the Home Secretary, who we just heard of in a moment, but, but firstly to the police and, and, and what they said today. They've uh, apologised for profound failings, which they said continued to blight relatives of, of victims like, like you. What, what do you. What do you make of that? Well, it's 34 years too late, isn't it? Um, I don't think it's sincere at all, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I've read the report this morning, obviously not word for word. Um, I've read quite a bit of it, though. And um, I feel that until actions change at top level, you know, high-ranking officers, chief constables... Um, and they're made accountable. I don't think anything will ever change within the police service. I think my main um, issue has always been that the reason why some of these police officers go to the lengths that they go to to, to lie and cover up and to um, not ever be held accountable for their actions or lack of actions is because they know that they are protected by their forces, the government, you know, the establishment just protect them. And so it's not in their interest to actually um, tell the truth. Um, you, you mentioned too little too late, and, and clearly it's uh, over three decades since... Uh, since you lost your brother. Uh, what about, more simply, the gap since the report came out, since 2017? What, what could it, uh, <laughs> explain a six-year gap uh, in responding to that? Well, you know, I was going to say that it, uh, there's just no excuse. Quite frankly, I was expecting them to, to blame COVID on it, to be honest with you, but um, obviously they haven't... Um, how many more reports do they need to release? I know there's going to be another report released, which, quite frankly, I don't want released. Um, I think that all these reports, it just takes us family, brief families and survivors back. We all try and move on with our lives, but we're not able to, um, because, obviously, there's always something around the corner again. Um, I, I just would like... the you know, people to be held accountable when they've done wrong. And I think that's all the public want, you know, is just to put your hands up and admit you've done wrong. Um, I think it's just the lies and the continuous lies. But it's also that they are then allowed to retire on a, um, a police pension. And, you know, some even continue, you know, to, to work for the police. Um... I just think it's outrageous. And I, th I think our police force is a national disgrace. I really do. And what, but I w what I would like to add is there are a lot of good police officers. They are not all bad at all. But the problem you have is the bad ones represent the good ones and it takes it it's going to take a lot i feel for a police service to be respected again because there's something coming out every single week every single day about corruption with you know within the police mm -hmm. well i mean it's certainly hard to argue about the too little too late point in terms of accountability i guess the police might suggest that's what they're trying to bring with, with this, this statement today. Uh, I wanted to, to move on, if I could, um, uh, with the government. And we just heard from Suella Braverman. I mean, clearly, we still haven't had their official response to the, the 2017 report. Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, just said the timing, uh, they want to avoid the risk of prejudice uh, and any ongoing criminal investigations. But the government, quote, is absolutely committed to responding to the bishop's report as soon uh, as practical. What, what do you make of that six years on? <laughs> well, let's just see how long it takes now for that report to be uh, written um, from today, shall we? Let's just see how serious and genuine um, 
they really are. Still no apology from them, though. Don't, don't forget, um, it was David Cameron who accused us of being blind people in a dark room looking for a black cat. And also, we were accused um, by the then Chief Constable um, David Crompton of being liars. Well, you know, we, we were the ones who were being accused of being liars. Um, in terms of uh, what you'd like to see from here, uh, th there was one uh, aspect going back to the police force where they've said an updated code of ethics uh, will see them, tr police officers <laughs> trained uh, in candour to prevent a repeat of lies uh, and cover ups uh, that, that followed the tragedy in April 1989. Oh, I was going to ask for your reaction, but I, can, I guess I can read it on your face. <laughs> well, so, yeah, sorry. Um, it, it's laughable, isn't it, really? I mean, I, why do you have to be trained to be an honest person? Um, I wasn't trained to be an honest person. Um, that's what a decent human being is. You are naturally honest, caring and compassionate. And um, those are the traits which they have never ever shown us bereaved families or survivors and i think um just going back to that and just to to hillsborough law um i didn't campaign for hillsborough law because um i didn't believe and i still don't believe hillsborough law will ever happen it, you know it should happen but it won't because the establishment goes to all lengths to protect themselves and it's not in the establishment's um, interest to have a Hillsborough law. But my other thing is that if you've got a person, not necessarily just a police officer, but anybody who goes to, into a courtroom um, and they do not want to tell the truth, they will not tell the truth. But the thing for me in relation to being a police officer when you know that you are going to be protected by your force and by the government, it's not in your interest to tell the truth. And that's one thing why I think that chief constables should be held uh, to account more. Um, and I think until things change at a much higher level, I don't think we'll start to see the changes at the lower levels. And I think that the lower levels know that they're protected so much that they know they can just get away with anything, really. Well, Louise Brooks, we thank you very much for joining us today.